And so we have uh, super hydrophobic surfaces, which are a big key of this. So it's surfaces where um, basically that uh, water does not like. So it doesn't wet the surface and it keeps being like fully spherical. And when you throw a liquid at these surfaces, then it bounces off and the order of magnitude of the time is like, I don't know, 10 milliseconds. And uh, we came up with this idea of putting like some kind of point-like singularities on surfaces to make them bounce faster. Uh, and that created some kind of like torus-like structures and it was really pretty, so. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Um, so talk me through um, how you set up and then run an experiment. Well, first thing you need to make is your substrate, so the cone in this case, so you have to get a metal piece machined so that it looks like this, and, and then you have to make it super hydrophobic. And then once you have that, you just have to throw water droplets at it and make a movie. So if you want to have nice experiments, uh, basically you need to throw the droplet centered on the tip of the cone, which is something that gets you a bit OCD as a PhD student. So if, for example, in the movie, they are all not all perfectly centered. And then uh, it's recording the movies, so you need uh, high-speed cameras. I think the typical frame rate is like 10,000 frames per second, so it all occurs really fast. So you need good light, uh, which is always uh, the key. So it's just a metal cone, like regular metal cone. And then we spray it with a commercial solution and basically it's like an alcohol. So I think in this one it's acetone and there are nanoparticles, hydrophobic nanoparticles dispersed in the acetone. So you spray that onto your cone and then the alcohol evaporates and you are left with uh, these hydrophobic nanoparticles on your surface and that provides the two things you need for super hydrophobicity, which is uh, Roughness, so all these nanoparticles, they create a roughness, and they're hydrophobic, so they also have the right surface chemistry, uh, so that this works. So you have a drop, one like big fragment of liquid, and after that, you have uh, that kind of annulus that spreads and that fragments into smaller droplets. And so one of the things we're interested in is uh, trying to characterize the, the fragments. So can we predict from, I don't know, the impact conditions, like drop size, cone angle, uh, impact velocity, are we able to say, okay, then in the end, the, most probable fragment size out of it, can we get a probability density function of this, uh, of this fragment size? Spraying pesticides is just throwing droplets of chemicals at leaves, and some leaves are actually have conical structures, even though at a much smaller size than the one I'm using. And when you throw pesticides everywhere, you don't want to fragment because then these very small fragments get transported into air and to stuff you actually didn't want to spray chemicals onto. A lot of people are actually there. I even talked here at the conference about people trying to understand, like, when you spray something, what's the fragment size? And it's important for the, for the industry. So you can tune the liquid, but you can tune what you're throwing stuff at. Yeah, I like, uh, I like taking movies. I also like photography before starting that PhD. So it's uh, actually a lot of help, because the, usually when the videos look better, it's also easier to measure stuff. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's quite fun experiments, and you don't get tired to, to play with it, let's say. At least I didn't yet. <laughs>